Major funding for NJTV News is provided in part by the members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. And PSE&G, we make things work for communities. Tonight on NJTV News, a change on the climate change accord. Governor Murphy takes a step toward re-entering Reggie, the regional greenhouse gas initiative, reversing another Christie-era policy. North Jersey veterans will gain access to another medical facility promising more treatment, less waiting. They lost their son to a recent terrorist attack. They'll be guests at tomorrow's State of the Union address delivering a message to the White House and to lawmakers. A new co-working space opens in Princeton to give scientists and engineers a facility where they can develop new startups. Plus, a New Jersey political institution calls it quits. Those stories are more next on NJTV News. Live from the Agnes Barris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway Center in Newark, this is NJTV News with Mary Alice Williams. Hello, thank you for joining us. We start with major stories that could reflect the climate in Washington and affect the climate in general. Chief political correspondent Michael Aaron has details. Michael? Mary Alice, Governor Murphy put New Jersey back into Reggie today, the regional greenhouse gas initiative. But there was bigger political news here. Congressman Rodney Frelinghuysen announced he will retire from the House of Representatives and not run for re-election this year. Frelinghuysen is just starting his second year as chairman of the House Appropriations Committee. That's a mighty position to give up. But the 23-year congressman has become a focal point of anti-Trump Democrats in his district and has had to fend off a lot of criticism over the past year. For reaction, we turned to Bill Palatucci, a confidant of former Governor Christie and a Republican National Committeeman. We asked if he was surprised by Frelinghuysen's announcement. Not entirely. I think mean, uh, Roddy had let it be known to people very close to him that he was thinking long and hard about whether or not to, to run again. Uh, obviously, everybody realizes he had not raised a lot of money in the fourth quarter of last year, which for incumbent is always a dead giveaway if they're not raising money for, the, for their upcoming election. That's a really usually a very good indicator of their intention, and in this, uh, this instance it was as well. You say uh, it, it's a dead giveaway that you don't raise a whole lot of money, but I think he hired Michael Duhame, uh, Governor Christie's former political advisor, to work on a potential campaign for him. Uh, that would that would certainly suggest that he wanted to keep that path open. Well, of course, I think that is uh, indication that he was torn. He is, in one sense, making preparations to run again by, by hiring Mike. He can't do better than that. But at the same time, he hadn't any, raised any money to give people like Mike ammunition should he decide to run. So I think that just the, 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 both uh, of those facts are, are indications that he was torn. Who walks away from being House Appropriations Committee chairman? I, I think that's probably unprecedented. Uh, probably so. I don't know. But I think it just indicates, uh, you know, just how the how Washington has changed, how uh, difficult the atmosphere has come from both sides of the aisle. I've seen lots of retirements this year. One thing you say about Rodney Freelingheisen, he's a gentleman. Both sides of the aisle will say that, members of, of either party. And I think uh, this is no longer um, an atmosphere, a, a culture in Washington for gentlemen, for people who are there for public policy, who are there to compromise and get things done. And so um, Rodney's made great contributions. Uh, to the state, uh, both as a freeholder legislator and, and a member of Congress. But I think uh, he just felt, as a lot of members have this year, that it's no longer a place for somebody who, who simply wants to be uh, about the people's business. So he's frustrated, like Frank Lobiondo, another Republican congressman from New Jersey who has decided to call it quits. I mean, I haven't spoken to, to Rodney about it in quite some time, but I, I assume that's, that's probably a fair characterization, let him speak for himself. But you've seen a lot of members say that, including members of the United States Senate, uh, again, of both parties. Um, it's a real rough and tumble atmosphere down there these days. Um, and so I'm not surprised to see somebody, uh, a gentleman like Rodney Freeland and say, you know, I'm just not up for that any longer. You think he's afraid of losing to the Democrat Mikey Sherrill in, in the fall? Uh, he, he's had a tough press for the past year. Uh, uh 
avoiding his constituents, uh, avoiding the media yep. back here in New Jersey, and Mikey Sherrill just gets more and more attention. I'm sure that's a factor, but um, don't be fooled also by Rodney's uh, gentlemanly uh, nature. This guy's a fighter. This guy's seen um, Republican politics from the inside for a long time. Uh, Vietnam War veteran. Um, let's not re forget that. This guy who, uh, you know, knows how to fight. Uh, I think it's just the, the, the culture and the times down there, um, I, I think, probably d d deterred him from, from taking another run at it. Uh, who is being discussed as a possible replacement for Rodney on the Republican side? Well, I think that's all coming together, you know, very quickly. It'll be, um, I've heard, you know, Jay Weber's name. Um, you know, we have Assemblyman. A Assemblyman Jay Weber. I think we have a couple of female members of the Morris County Freeholder Board. Um, that's the opportunity for Republicans. Republicans, frankly, if, if uh, Rodney has decided to step aside, uh, we get to pick a fresh face, perhaps, perhaps a female, Republican female. So Rodney Freelinghuysen, whose ancestors helped found this country, is ending his congressional career. One person probably exulting tonight is the leading Democrat in the 11th District, Mikey Sherrill. Another political development today involved Governor Phil Murphy. The governor signed an executive order paving the way for New Jersey to re-enter the regional greenhouse gas initiative, Reggie, as it's known. Withdrawing from Reggie was one of Governor Christie's more controversial decisions back in 2011. As part of our continuing series, Peril and Promise, the Challenge of Climate Change, we take a look at what Murphy did today. Governor Murphy held a press conference in Highlands this morning to announce he's rolling back another Christie-era policy. In just a few minutes, I'm going to sign an executive order to start the process to get New Jersey back into Reggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reggie is the regional greenhouse gas initiative. Nine Northeast states participate in it. It's a compact to control carbon emissions Former Governor Chris Christie famously pulled New Jersey out of it in 2011. Reggie does nothing more than tax electri electricity, tax our citizens, tax our businesses, with no discernible or measurable impact upon our environment. Murphy sees the issue differently. For many years, uh, frankly, for decades, New Jersey was a leader in smart environmental policy making on both sides of the aisle, I might add, that makes sense for today, but frankly, even more sense for tomorrow. Unfortunately, over the last eight years, we lost that part of our soul. Highlands at the northern tip of the shore was heavily hit by Superstorm Sandy. Murphy's announcement was held here in a ferry terminal much used by Monmouth County residents. The governor linked Sandy to climate change and criticized the Trump administration's policy toward it. At a time when President Trump is trying to open up our coast for fossil fuel exploration, we must have the ability to fight back with smarter, forward-thinking solutions. Solutions that begin with recognizing that climate change is real and it is a real threat to our state. First Lady Tammy Murphy said leaving Reggie had cost the state $279 million left on the table. The threat of climate change isn't going away, but that doesn't mean we do nothing. We can fight back. Everything we do to combat climate change is worth doing. The executive order is a signal of intent. There is a process for getting back into Reggie, but in a room full of Democrats and environmentalists, it was all welcome news. He's not just talking about getting into Reggie, but really putting an emphasis on our ports, which have been badly and sorely needing some help in reducing our carbon footprint. Well, Governor Christie uh, unilaterally removed us, um, and I guess in his quest to become president of the United States, uh, that was failed. Uh, but we have now a governor who is putting together these solutions and, and instead of sound bites, and it's exciting for our state. This press conference is a breath of fresh air, literally and figuratively. So Governor Murphy continues to strip away parts of the Christie legacy. Senator Smith, chairman of the Environment Committee, called Murphy here today perhaps the greenest governor in America. In Highlands, I'm Michael Aaron, NJTV News. Turning now to the state of New Jersey business, standing by at the Strategic Development Group studio at the NJCU School of Business is Rhonda Schaffler. Rhonda, state-sponsored retirement accounts? 
Looking that way, Mary Alice, many small business workers in New Jersey should eventually be able to participate in a state-run 401k plan. The state treasury department has taken the initial step toward creating such an investment vehicle and is reviewing proposals submitted by financial institutions. This comes after Governor Christie signed a law back in 2016 to create a supplemental 401k plan for employers with 100 or fewer workers in the state. Once the Treasury Department reviews all the proposals, a short list of possible financial companies will be announced in the next few months, according to NJ Biz. Internet gambling may be expanding in New Jersey. The two casinos opening in Atlantic City this summer have both applied for licenses to conduct online gambling in the state, according to the Associated Press. There would be seven Atlantic City casinos offering Internet gambling if the Ocean Resort Casino and the Hard Rock Casino get approval. Internet gambling revenue totaled $245 million last year in New Jersey, an increase of 25 percent from the previous year. A bill to strengthen the state's law against energy slamming was released by an assembly committee today. Energy slamming is the practice of changing a consumer's electric power or gas supplier without their consent. In New Jersey, that's led to higher utility bills for consumers. This bill increases financial penalties for energy suppliers who engage in that practice. In economic news, a big jump in mortgage rates could put a dent in refinancing activity and home purchases. Rates hit their highest level in four years today, with 30-year mortgage rates pushed up to 4.5 percent at some lenders. Interest rates are rising as the U.S. economy continues to grow, and expectations are building the Federal Reserve will continue to move interest rates higher at upcoming meetings. Also today, we learned we're saving less money. The U.S. savings rate has now fallen to a 10-year low. Turning to Wall Street, those rising rates rattled investors. Stocks moved lower. The Dow was off 177 points. And those are our top business stories. A county hospital once plagued with problems has been transformed into a center that's expanding health care to vets and active duty personnel. Senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan reports. So if you can't get there, you got a problem. Navy vet Kevin Clancy says veterans who need hospital services have had just two choices in New Jersey, the VA Medical Center in Lyons out in Somerset County or the one in East Orange, Essex County. That made it tough for many North Jersey vets. I get guys calling me up all the time. Hey, you know, I missed the bus. So then I have to wait two weeks, get another appointment. Anything like CAT scans or major stuff like that. If you don't have to travel to Essex County, it's a lot better. So vets and officials today applauded a new health care option, New Bridge Medical Center in Paramus. It's now a participating provider in the Veterans Choice Program and will serve not only the 35,000 vets in Bergen County, but any Jersey veterans who get a referral from their VA physician. Through a partnership with the Veterans Administration, it serves two priorities. To create greater choice uh, for veterans that they can receive timely care and also in addition to improving timely access to care. This is about us giving them the ability to get more health care. This is about our ability to provide them choice. This is about raising the percentage of veterans taking advantage of veterans services. Newbridge is the new name for the former Bergen Regional Medical Center. The once troubled county facility was plagued by patient violence, but it's been run by new management since October and will now offer vets imaging and diagnostic services like digital MRIs, full service labs and pharmacy and behavioral and substance abuse services. Words are, are nice, uh, but action, substantive action, is what folks really need if you're going to express gratitude. It's one thing to see a service member and say thank you for their service. It's another thing to do things that empower our veterans. Perhaps this day with our veterans uh, we can rekindle a flame uh, that can bring warmth uh, to our communities at a time that there's too much cold bitterness. We need action that is tangible so people and veterans believe that they're being serviced and not that they're a burden.
Many hope Newbridge will eventually provide vets with a full slate of inpatient services. We're hoping this will be a full service VA hospital at one point. Uh, this is just a starting point. They don't look at you as a dollar sign, they look at you as a veteran, which you are, and the atmosphere is much more conducive and friendly and it makes you feel good. Access includes transportation. Vets who drive will get free valet parking, and Bergen County will add extra buses to help vets get over here to the medical center. In Paramus, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News. A new bill triggered by last Halloween's bike path terror attack. It would prevent anyone on the no-fly list from renting any vehicle. Michael Hill met with parents who lost their son in the carnage. Jimmy and Barbara Drake know the grief a terror attack can leave in its wake. We can't bring our son back, but if we can provide that other families don't have to go through the grief of losing a, a loved one due to a senseless murder, that would be wonderful. The Drakes lost their 32-year-old son, Darren, in the Islamic State-inspired attack on Halloween in Manhattan. A radicalized man accused of driving a rented truck onto a bike path, killing eight people. We need everything that we can get to arm ourselves. There was a clear step we could have taken. We know that he had already been on the authorities' radar. Congressman Josh Gottheimer is writing a bill to require background checks for all rental vehicles. He pointed out that the first World Trade Center attack 25 years ago and recent attacks on London Bridge and in Paris were all done with rented vehicles. When enacted, the Darren Drake Act will help us thwart lone wolf terror by requiring that all vehicle dealers and rental companies match critical information on individuals against the government's terror watch list. Rental companies will be required to share instantaneously this information with FBI and the National Counterterrorism Center, NCTC, to flag any potential terrorist matches. The Drakes support the bill. It has to be one of the greatest ideas for helping Americans be safe. The Drakes will be guests of Congressman Gottheimer at the State of the Union, and their presence, they hope, will deliver a message to the White House and to lawmakers. ISIS and their terrorists, they're not looking for any one person. Anybody that's American, they want to kill, okay? And it could have been your brother, it could have been your brother, it could have been anyone's. It's America. This is us. If there were ever a time that we could pull together, this is it. These people are after us, you know? So with the, if I could get a word to the president, I would just say, Mr. President, let's pull us together and not divide us. Gottheimer says the technology exists to run such counterterrorism checks seamlessly on all rented vehicles under a Darren Drake combating 21st century weapons of terror act, a move the Drakes agree that given the history of how rented vehicles have been used to kill and maim should have been done long ago. In New Milford, Michael Hill, NJTV News. Expanding health sciences, that tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Manahawkin, where students arriving for spring semester found Stockton University's campus had ballooned at more than three times its size. It took over an adjacent building to add nearly 8,000 square feet, giving nursing students space for hands-on learning in a six-bed lab and exam rooms. The new site allows the university to expand its 15-month accelerated program for registered nurses and those transitioning to Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Next to Newark, where Devils All-Star Brian Boyle's back at practice after taking a star turn on his former team's home ice during the NHL's All-Star Weekend. Boyle played for the Tampa Bay Lightning for parts of three seasons. He became a late addition to the Devils roster in July and in September was diagnosed with chronic myelogenous leukemia, a serious but treatable bloodborne cancer. Facing the fight of his life, he returned to NHL action and made the All-Star team. And every time he stepped on the ice, Boyle got standing ovations, an experience he says he'll never forget. Finally, Cape May Courthouse, where there's a good bet on the big game, names Walter. 
Zookeepers at the Cape May County Park and Zoo wanted their old one hump dromedary Marty to pick a Super Bowl favorite, but he couldn't stand the stress. So a 10 month old Bactrian camel named Walter became the zoo's chief prognosticator. Given the choice between a Patriots jersey and an Eagles jersey, the two humped ungulate sauntered between the two, got a whiff of both and chewed on the Eagles. The zoo says it means Walters picked the Eagles to win. No one's suggesting it could mean the Eagles will get chewed up in Minnesota. And that's the Garden State Express for Monday, January 29th. Something up in your neighborhood? Tip us off. Drivers navigating the Driscoll Bridge this morning got a glimpse of the future. Eight months of traffic congestion ahead due to lane shifts. The Turnpike Authority says they're necessary to make room for construction work to replace the bridges over Chevalier Avenue in Sayreville. The number of lanes won't change north of where the local and express lanes merge, but they'll be divided. Four lanes left, three right. The entire Chevalier Avenue bridges over the parkway should be rebuilt sometime in 2019. Easing the logistics of turning a brainstorm into a business, a new Princeton University incubator is putting entrepreneurs next to the people they need to succeed. Leah Mishkin reports. We've had, uh, we've had a lot of interest from uh, some of the uh, chemistry faculty at Princeton. We're getting a tour of Princeton Innovation Center Biolabs, a new co-working space which will be home to more than 20 startup companies in the sciences and engineering fields. The Biolabs founder says it will be part of a network of facilities around the country where innovators build new companies. We currently have about 170 companies that use one of our labs somewhere in the U.S. Um, about half of them develop new drugs. Uh, these could be antibody drugs or could be biologics that would cure cancer or that would um, help you with your rheumatoid arthritis. But this facility is created in partnership with Princeton University. The executive director of the Entrepreneurship Council at the school says while basic research and the academics remains on campus, they wanted to create a space where faculty and students could go to grow their ideas into a business. Historically, we haven't had that many spin out as new companies. Uh, that's starting to ramp up. Uh, and some of the companies that will be in here will definitely be faculty companies and grad student companies. She says while New Jersey has similar spaces, they don't offer the same resources as this one. All of the equipment is here. So the other facilities, you have to spend a lot of your time and money, most importantly, buying equipment in. Whereas here you have all the resources you Whereas need. Whereas here you come in and the promise is that within one week you're up and running and doing your science. The Biolabs founder says another asset is having peers working around you. That will make it easy for each of the participants to network. This is about things like how much should I pay my employees? How do I negotiate contracts? Um, how do I in-license or out-license patents if I haven't done it before? In 2014, startups in New Jersey attracted just one-tenth of the venture capital that was invested in New York. But the center hopes to tap into a strength in the state. According to the state's website, 14 of the world's 20 biggest pharmaceutical companies are located here in New Jersey. Big companies have laid off a bunch of researchers and that talent is now available um, to help uh, new companies. The company says anyone can apply to rent space at the center, but only qualified applicants will be chosen. In Princeton, Leah Mishkin, NJTV News. And now some noteworthy facts that help you know Jersey. Five Atlantic City casinos currently offer internet gambling. Nine states participate in the regional greenhouse gas initiative. New Jersey would be the 10th if it joined. 14 out of 20 of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies are based in New Jersey. And New Jersey's home to more than 371,000 veterans, according to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. If there's someone who you'd like to get to know Jersey, share. Use hashtag NoJersey. 
Tomorrow on NJTV News, Newark schools finally poised to take control from the state. We'll hear from the state-appointed superintendent who helped make that happen. To share any story you've seen tonight, go to njtvnews.org. I'm Mary Alice Williams. For all the men and women of NJTV News, thank you for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. J. Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of New Jersey residents and businesses for more than 100 years. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Lead funding for Peril and Promise is provided by Dr. P. Roy Vagalos and Diana T. Vagalos. Major support is provided by the Mark Haas Foundation and Sue and Edgar Wachenheim III. NJM Insurance Company has been serving New Jersey policyholders for more than 100 years. But just who are NJM's policyholders? They're the men and women who keep the Garden State growing, business leaders, the caretakers of our historic landmarks, and the custodians of our public safety the people who make our state a great place to call home. NJM, we've got New Jersey covered. Together, we're beating cancer. Together, we're unlocking the mysteries of the brain. Together, we're changing the way healthcare is provided, delivered, and imagined. Welcome to RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey's most comprehensive healthcare system with 41,000 medical professionals serving millions of people throughout New Jersey. So when it comes to your health and wellness, you're never alone. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together.